for 200 million. And he said, you know what's interesting is that when you talk to most people, he said 99% of people are plugged into the matrix. And what he meant by that is that they're operating from a place of lack and a place of desire to get other people to give them money, right? That's kind of where they operate from. He said, when you exit the matrix, it's very rare, but you'll see that when you make things just for the sake of making them, like art, then they, ha they take on a whole different form. And this book- Bob Way for those. Yeah. I think there's 1 million, 10 million, 100 billion, yeah. or 100 million, a billion, 10 billion, a trillion. Trillions, yeah. I, I have all of those. Yeah, I, think I think the top is $100 trillion. And, and it's crazy because yeah. the value of the note itself isn't as valuable as the paper it's printed on. Like Literally, the paper is more valuable. There is a small number of people that they have made business for them to profit from this anxiety. I'll give you an example. I have been arrested by FBI. This is what someone wrote. Mm. I, I read it. I laughed. I mean, okay, th this is where they take it. There was a reason why they wrote it that. The Pfizer CEO was arrested by FBI because they want to create doubts in the minds of the people that they're afraid and say, look, if FDI arrested him, likely I will not do the vaccine. But I laughed. A week later, the wife of the Pfizer CEO died. Hmm. There is a picture in, the, in this website of my wife. Someone sends to me. Now I'm pissed. I'm not laughing. I try to find my kids to tell them, if you read something, mom is fine. Don't worry. Then I remember that she has very old parents back in Greece. We start calling them to making sure because you know that that will be picked up by Greek newspapers and they will, uh, will publish it, okay? They are the, those people that wrote these things. They know very well that my wife didn't die and died because she, she was vaccinated, right? So this is the narratives that they are on purpose forming to profit from uh, the stress and uh, um, the anxiety of good people. That reminds me because I think that's kind of what is the source of division. Look, humility is a virtue. Yes. And uh, yes. the fact that you are educated doesn't mean that you are having either humility or empathy or you have good uh, human qualities. This was never and will never be a, a, a metric of judging this type of virtues. Um, those that they do this, they're wrong. And actually, they, they are not. It's that for the vast majority of people in consumer culture, they are incented by the, I would say mostly I'm thinking about middle class consumers. Mm -hmm. They're incented by advertisements. They're incented by their mimetic environment to treat the purchasing of certain things, the need to buy the latest model of whatever, the need to appear however, the need to pursue status games as a driver of meaning. And my point would be that it's a very hollow driver of meaning. And that is what creates a meaning crisis. Because at the end of the day, it's like eating a lot of empty calories, right? Yeah, it tasted good going down, it's a lot of sugar, but man, it did not, it was not enough protein to help build your muscles. And you kind of feel that in your gut. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I mean, so all the stuff aside and setting aside our discussion on currency, which I hope we get back, get back to, that's what I mean about the meaning crisis part of it being created by the fact that we don't, um, we're, we're not encouraged to have more and more direct relationships. Mm -hmm. We're actually alienated from relating to even, even our family members sometimes, right? We're, we're encouraged to relate to brands. We're encouraged to relate to these kinds of things that then tell us to um, do things that are really of low consequence. But isn't money not connected to, or less and less connected to hard resources and money still seems to work? It's a virtual technology. Um, there's different kinds of money. Part of the reason that some of the stuff is able to go a little unhinged is because uh, the, 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 the big sovereignties where one spends money and uses money and plays money games and inflates money, um, their, their ability to adjudicate the physical resources and hard resources and land and things like that, those have not been challenged in a very long time. So, you know, we went off the gold standard. Most mm -hmm. money is not connected to physical resources. Uh, it's an idea. Mm -hmm. And that idea is very closely connected to status. 
Um, so why? It's all, but it's also tied to like it's actually tied to law. It's, it is tied to some physical hard things. So you have to pay your taxes. Yes. So it's always at the end going to be connected to the uh, the blockchain of physical reality. So in the case of law and taxes, it's connected to government, and uh, government is what violence is the. I'm, I'm playing like the monopoly of violence. Of devil's advocates here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, popping one devil off the stack at a time. But anything done by the government is going to be inefficient um, because the government is a monopoly. Um, it, it, like people that don't like corporations should not somehow think that the government is, is, much, is much better because the government is a, a corporation in the limit. It is the ultimate corporation. Uh, with a monopoly on violence. So, um, so, so like I think, you know, the right role for the government is, is, is like to be uh, acting in a regulatory capacity. Um, and, but but the, we, we should aspire to have the government be, be a, a limited actor in the economy. Um, so doctrinally, we still have a very, very long way to go. Some of that gap could be closed if people listen to Steve Calabresi and replace administrative law judges with actual Article Three judges, but I'll believe that uh, when I see it. But we sign up for that stuff. Like when you yes. sign your cell phone thing, there's all kinds of oh, bullshit yeah. in there. Well, nobody reads terms and agreements. When was the last time you read terms and agreements Who? for uh, anything? I, I think it's a very rare breed that ever takes the time.